In this video, I want to show you how I paint an anime girl's portrait using Stella Vermilion as an example. Here I have sketched her on a piece of watercolor paper and I have taped it onto my easel. The pencil lines around her eyes are a little bit too dark. I don't want it to muddy up my watercolor paint later, so I'm picking it up with my eraser. Usually I make it pretty fainted as long as I can see where the shapes are. Uh, I will erase most of it. I usually like to start from the face, so I picked up some quinacridone burnt orange and diluted it with water and start painting the first wash. I have quite a bit of paint on my brush and I'm trying to do a really smooth flat wash. I'm trying to stay inside the shape of the pencil outline, but it's okay if you paint outside of it, just um, because the skin color is light, you can easily smear the edges to make it a soft edge. The color usually next to it will be able to cover it. After you finish the first wash, let it dry completely before you go back and touch up or strengthen some color. Next, I'll paint her hair. Her hair is a pink color with purple ombre. So I'm using quinacridone red for the top portion. And at the end of each strand, I'm gonna drop in some purple to create the gradient. This is just a first wash stone, so don't worry too much about the details. Just get the general shape right. For me, I'm just putting the strands where I think they will go in a kind of in a, some sort of windy situation. And I can go in to put in the details in the next round. She has her hair tie here, so I'm trying to go around it and paint the hair behind it. My sketch seems to make it too low, so I'm gonna go a little bit higher. I'm blurring out the edges sometimes because I wanna create the movement of the hair. I'm dropping in some purple for the gradient. I think it's a little bit too dark here, so I'm lifting some of the color. She has long hair in the back, so I think there should be also some strand goes like this. Also drop in some purple to indicate the ombre, the color change. Here I'm just painting along the edges of her shoulder of her school uniform. It's like a negative painting for the uniform. Now for this side, it's similar idea. I want the wind to blow this way, so I would use a lot of brush strokes to go this direction. Also paint around her hair tie. This is the most fun part because you can just paint freely with creative curvy brush strokes. Since it's only the first wash, you can keep it lighter and then you can put in the details later. I'm adding a stronger color here um, to indicate the inner layer of the hair. If your paint dries too quickly, you can't do it now. You can always do it on the second layer. When I get to around her face, I'll paint really carefully and try not to get any paint on her face. But I can't let some color bleed into her shirt and to make it more cohesive. I rinse my brush to do some lift here to create some strength. If all the brush stroke curves this way, it looks kind of uh, stiff. So also add some strokes in the opposite direction to make it more messy and natural.
Next, I'll do the second wash of her face just to strengthen some area to make it more three-dimensional. Usually, I will do it around the edges of her face. The color I'm using is still the quinacridone burnt orange plus a little bit of quinacridone burnt scarlet to add a little bit of redness to her face. I carefully paint around the hair and try not to let any hair reactivate any hair color and let it bleed into the face. Her eye color is reddish brown. Um, so I'm using a brown here to start from the top. I put the stronger color at the top and then rinse my brush and use water to drag it down. And I'm just fixing the shape. If you don't think it's strong enough, you can drop in more of the brown color. Her eye also has a little bit of reddish tone in there, so I'm dropping in a bit of uh, quinacridone burnt scarlet. Any dark red would do, actually. Now I'm painting her eyelashes. You just need a steady hand and patience. Don't go too fast because it's dark color. If you get it on her face, it's gonna be hard to fix. Um, also, a pointy brush helps. Especially for the eyelashes, the single eyelashes. It'll look weird if it has a blunt end. My brush is not very pointy, actually. It's been used for quite a while, so I lost the pointy end. So what I'm doing is just I kind of flatten the brush and then I turn it around and use the thin edge to, to do the eyelash. There's usually a line above the eye to indicate the fold of the eyelid. I usually wouldn't paint it with really strong dark color because it will look kind of stiff. It works in anime, but in watercolor, um, I usually use a strong uh, shadow color, skin shadow color. And then I try to make it more three-dimensional. For example, here I would uh, smear the edges at the top to indicate the shadow that's created by the fold. If you don't know how to mix the skin color or the shadow color, check out my other video of how to mix a skin color for anime girls. Now I'm painting the shadows created by the eyelashes. I'm just using a very light brown mixed with a little bit of black. So it's kind of a warm gray. For her nose, while well, usually the anime girl nose is really tiny, uh, you don't want a black dot here. Uh, I'm using quinacridone red uh, with a little bit of purple just to indicate the shadow. And you can uh, make the edge blurry. So it has a soft edge on one side and hard edge on the other side. For the mouth, I'm using a diluted pinkish color for the first wash. And in the next wash, I'm going to add some shadows. I strengthen the colors around the edges of her mouth to make it three-dimensional. Now I'm adding the shadow layer on her neck. I'm also fixing some of the edges that I did in the first wash, which is not very accurate. I think this side of the face is a little bit too big, so I'm fixing that right now. After the fix, the face shape looks much better now. Moving on to her clothes. Her shirt is white, so I'm using a bluish gray as a shadow color.
I'm using a dryer brush to pick up the excess paint over here so it doesn't create a watermark. You want to keep the brush stroke soft to describe the texture of the shirt. Where you don't think it's dark enough for a deeper fold of the fabric, you can just drop in more paint. Her flying hair should create some shadows on the shirt, so I'm just painting in some lines here. She has a bowl tied in front of her shirt, but because it's behind the hair, I'm painting it carefully around the hair. Now I'm adding a little bit of detail on where the clothes seams are. You can use a rigger to drop in some thicker paints and then use a clean brush to smear the edges to create a soft edge. Her hair tie is mostly yellow with a touch of green, so I'm mixing some really bright yellow with a with a little bit of green on my palette. I'm dropping in some stronger green to create some shadows. And you can blur the edges to create some movement. Now we can finish up the hair. I start with adding more detail to her bands, darkening the parts that curves down. This is also a good time to fix the edges. If the strands is not as good in the first wash, just use a rigger with some stronger color to touch it up. I can also add loose hair like this in this wash. Here I'm using negative painting to paint what's behind the front hair to make the front hair pop. Same thing here, you can use negative painting to paint the shadow created by the top layer um, to separate them from the bottom layer. To be able to add these details with sharp edges and details, you have to wait until the previous layer is completely dry. So move around the painting to do the details where it's dry already, and then come back to the rest later. Now I'm happy with her bands and it's completely dry, I can go in and add shadows that's created by the bands.
strengthening the color in her pupil. Her uniform has a patch of warm gray. Since I painted the hair and the bow already, I'm just putting in this color very carefully. It has some diagonal lines on there, but I have to wait until this layer is dry before I put that on. For watercolor, usually we go from light to dark. Now most of the details are done around her neck. I can put in her choker. Ninety percent of this painting is done. I'm just going around to add details. I forgot to put in blush. We should have put it in earlier. But we can still put it in now. I'm wetting the paper a bit and then dropping in some quinacridone coral. And I'm using a clean brush to move it around or to make it stronger. The blush should follow the shape of the face. All right, I think I should stop before I add in too much details. I want to keep it loose. The last step will be adding highlights. Here I'm using a poster color, white. This is opaque color. You can also use gouache. A white gouache works the same, or white inks. Places you can add highlights are hair, um, some hair strands that's on top of each other, eyes, nose, lips. You can also use it to touch up the hair strands you paint before, where you think the tip might not be sharp enough. You can add it uh, extended with some gouache. Also, you can use it as highlights on the hair where you forgot to put in highlights. You don't want to overuse highlights. Use it sparingly so the impact is stronger. So this is done. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and find it helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment below.